Welcome to twoquestions.tv. With me today is Laura Carruthers, and we're talking about being an entrepreneur in the dance world. Welcome to twoquestions.tv. I'm your host, Susan Barancini Mo. Joining me today is Laura Carruthers, a six time national champion and world ranked Scottish Highland dancer, a former member of Ballet Arizona, and an honors graduate of ASU's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Laura develops uniquely beautiful and insightful projects in both theater and film that combine her abilities to direct, choreograph, perform, arrange music, and edit. I think that's like a quadruple threat. Oh, she's, uh, she has this wild and classy originality that springs from her fusion of artistic styles and techniques, her depth of vision, and her collaborative form performances with some of the very best in music, dance, and cinematography. Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Well, I'm so glad to have you. And I was, as I was telling you before, I have a little history with Irish dance and Scottish dance. And so I'm, I'm so happy to have you here. Um, you went from Highland dancer to ballet dancer to now you're like this multiple, like you do all these things um, where you're involved in every aspect of the production. Now, I imagine that you've learned quite a bit about transition, especially when you grow up with an identity that's so firmly rooted in being the Scottish Highland dancer. So how did you manage transition into ballet and then into the entrepreneur that you are now? Was it natural or was there a struggle? And what did you really learn about transition? Well, it's, it's kind of interesting because I didn't really transition to ballet until I was actually quite a bit older. Um, Highland dancing very much dominated my identity uh, through <laughs> most of my younger years in even through most of my high school years, uh, I felt this desire to continue to dance. I initially thought that I would put away the dancing and just go right to college and <laughs> carry on academically because I was fairly strong in that, in that area as well. Uh, but I, I came across a, a ballet mentor at Arizona State University uh, and I thought, well, I would just continue with the dance and kind of keep those fires burning. And, and she really took to me. So she, she, she really thought, wow, there's, there's something here um, that, that we can work on. And this is, this is kind of an interesting background that you come from. And so she was Indeed. intrigued with my past as, as much as anything. And so it was sort of a natural transition. I, as I said, I didn't really think, I didn't plan to necessarily go down the, the road to the ballet company, but that's just sort of what happened based on the experiences that I had at ASU. I did graduate. I graduated from an academic. I was a liberal arts and sciences major, but then I also had this incredibly intense passion for ballet that, you know, I have to say initially when I was just a, a baby, about four and five, that's where I started, was actually mm -hmm. in a very general program in Burbank, um, a, a ballet tap program, um, and then it and then it turned into the Highland dancing thing. So I almost feel like I got back to those initial feelings that I had as right. a child, and so it it just moved in that direction. And and before you know it, I was I was doing uh, taking classes at. Uh, Ballet Arizona and, and the director came in and said, hey, you want to be in the company? And so <laughs> I said, sure, I'll be in the company. So that transition was just a very natural one. And, and as well as the next one, I um, had established a, a relationship with the, the, uh, the director in terms of professionally what he saw in the, the Highland skills that I had, as well as the ballet skills. And so together we put together a solo production that did really, really well among critics and audiences. And and that seemed to, to really almost uh, invigorate my, my interest in possibly bringing Highland back into my dance experience. And so I thought it was maybe the time I, to start off in this direction. I had mastery in both fields at that time. I had made it into the ballet company. I knew what I was doing there. I had this Highland past. We had this solo that really, really did well. And I thought, well, there's something here about this hybrid mm -hmm combination of techniques and so I just I felt at that moment it was it was perhaps the time to start it get going early on that because I know these things take a while so, <laughs> so from then so the whole thing to me was a very a natural progression it really just came about by past things influencing the next set of choices that you're making so it was no deliberate moment where I thought oh absolutely this is this is now what we need to do it just over time and over a series of experiences, I thought, okay, now it's 
it's time to maybe launch into this new direction and, and see where it goes. Well, it seems to have gone in a really good direction. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> now there's Grace Fury. So I want you to tell us a little bit about that. Um, and and um, also, you know, this is a very entrepreneurial venture. So what yeah. entrepreneurial lessons have you learned at this point in the journey that you might impart to, say, some young people who are watching today? Right. Well, there's every every experience is different. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Grace Fury is a is an ex, a very experimental documentary or film memoir, as I would call it. Uh, it's it's an, sort of an elemental trip through my experiences um, over the years, uh, pioneering building on stage and film, you know, across those two platforms and their technologies dance traditions, obviously, that are pretty well guarded and their vocabularies among other artists and craftsmen and trying to get agreement and cooperation there as a woman. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the woman's background. Yes. Uh, and, it, you know, and, and obviously coming from an ethnic dance background that's, that's mm. not widely known, certainly not compared to Irish dancing. It's that's so weird to hear you say that because to me, you know, <laughs> that it's so widely known because I grew up in that world. You know, right. I, you know, my, my niece is in that world. It's so weird to hear you. I know you're right, but Right. <laughs> and, and there's the distinction between the Scottish and the Irish. So the Irish yeah. actually have a leg up, I think, a little bit on the Scottish Indeed. dance tradition. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. I don't know that everybody really knows what Scottish Highland dancing is, but they certainly know river dance. So oh, yes. there's, there's that distinction. But yeah. uh, so there's so much to learn. As I said, uh, you're just planning, uh, also persevering. Be prepared to make mistakes. You will make mistakes. And sometimes you make them over again. <laughs> Where you're not going to do that again this time and circumstances would have it. I think it's being, um, it's being flexible is really important. Learning to compromise is also very important, especially if you're wearing a lot of different hats. You, you have to, uh, uh, definitely there's a give and take going on. So you have to be accommodating, realizing that other people also have their plans and they're coming from their backgrounds. And so I think that's really what I would say is really listen, try to listen in terms of entrepreneurial, uh, any aspirations your listeners and viewers might have. Uh, it's just to open open your eyes and ears and, and try to remember that it's to not get too caught up in any one particular area <laughs> that would send the whole thing overboard. So I think that's one of the huge lessons that I've learned is to just Go with the flow sometimes, but also keep your head about you and know that you, you've got a vision, you've got a concept, and, and try to achieve that as best you possibly can under the circumstances and realize that in some cases, the mis certain things you might perceive as, oh, well, it wasn't planned or it might mm -hmm. appear at first as a mistake is something you can actually incorporate in and actually comes out really well. So, you know, yeah. don't, don't ever dismiss the idea that, that things that happen spontaneously can be a good thing too. So. Indeed, I agree with that completely. Some of the best things that have happened have been right. coincidence, circumstance, or mistakes. That's, right. That's, right. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I know we're going to link to the trailer for Grace Fury in the show notes for today, but also viewers, it's going to be up here in the mm, up here, up here in the cards for today. So you guys know I love to use those cards. So we'll make sure that, that our audience gets to see that because I've watched it. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful thank work. You. So, so I'm so glad that we had a chance to talk. Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. I've loved it. It's great. What a pleasure. <laughs> absolutely. Me too. Well, viewers, again, make sure you watch that trailer. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.